Hallelujah. Well, last week we, we, we shared about separation for the move, separate, separation for the move. Uh, and, and the Lord just took over the service uh, mightily so. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And, and, and he spoke to us about uh, uh, um, 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 the need and uh, uh, the requirement for, 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 for separation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. That it is needed that we must be separated because there is no ordination that is coming without separation. Whenever God calls you, whenever God calls you for a move, whenever God calls you for a calling, whenever God calls you to do anything else, he will not do it without separating you. Hallelujah. He had to take Moses out of, uh, out of Pharaoh's uh, palace so that he can call him. He even took him out of, uh, out of, out of his father's in, in law's house because there was a calling. Hallelujah. He, told, he spoke to Jeremiah and said, Jeremiah, I have separated you. I have ordained you and separated you. Listen, watch where David was called from. David was called from separation. He was in the fields. He was not with his brothers. All his brothers were in the house. He was the only one who came from outsider. Not because he's an outsider, but because he was separated for the calling. Hallelujah, somebody. Therefore, child of God, you must understand that any separation that you feel in your life, please don't fight the separation without having the revelation of the separation. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't fight the separation without having the revelation of the separation. Therefore, it is important, child of God, that as you, as you experience the separation, you must ask God, what is the meaning of the separation? Hallelujah. Because many a times we want to fight what we call separation. It's, it is separation in your eyes, but to God, it's preparation and appointment. Can I say it again tonight? To God, it is preparation and appointment. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, it is separation in your eyes, but to God, it is preparation and appointment. Hallelujah. The calling of Elijah. Remember when Elijah started his ministry. When Elijah started his ministry, he started his ministry when he started praying that it should not rain for three and a half years. And the moment he spoke that it should not rain for three and a half years, God said to Elijah, he said to Elijah, go down uh, to the brook of Cherith. There I have ordained ravens. He goes to the brook of Cherith all by himself sir, and he eats what the ravens are giving him. While he is eating what the ravens are giving him, God said, the, the Bible says, now the brook of Cherith dried out. When it dried out, the Lord released another commandment. And he says, I have commanded a widow in Zerepath to provide for you. Therefore, you must move to Zerepath. Remember, God was talking to a prophet, a whole prophet, Elijah, saying, go to a widow. Understand? You see, there are certain words that scripture uses that scripture does not just use for the sake of it. You must drill down to it. You must understand that the Bible had to mention that the, the woman that Elijah was going to is a widow because by those times, the moment you become a widow, you lose your identity. The moment you become a widow, you do not have a voice. There's no one that can speak for you because women in those days could only find identity by marriage. They could only find identity because they had a man in their lives. Hallelujah, somebody. Now listen what to God said. God said to Elijah, I need you to go to a widow in Zerah. God was trying to teach Elijah to say, Elijah, your calling I am separating you for so that you must walk in obedience, even in the place of lowlessness, even in the place where you feel like I, I, I ain't gonna do anything, but I can use anything and anybody for your blessing and for your calling. Hallelujah, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Look at your neighbors and neighbor, don't look down upon me. I'll right, come and tell your neighbors and neighbor, don't look down upon me. God can use me for your calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God can use anyone for the calling. Well, tonight I want us to drill down on the scripture for the next 30 minutes. And I'm going to let you go tonight. Separated for the move. Acts chapter 13. We read verse number 1. Up to verse number 3. Uh, New King James Version. Um, Acts chapter number 13. Acts chapter number 13, we read verse number 1 up to verse number 3. We will also do number 13, the same chapter, verse 45 and verse 46. And then we jump to chapter 14, 14 um, um, verse 1 and 3. And we will see where the Lord allows us to end. There's a lot to share, but I don't think we're going to share everything tonight. 
in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we ready to read? Are we ready to read? If you don't have your Bible, just take your eyes to the screen tonight in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Are we ready to read? Hey, we don't have members of this church. Because we stand for the reading of this word in, 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 this, in this house. We stand for the reading of the word. I don't understand why I have to say it. Hallelujah. Listen to what scripture says. The Bible says, now in the church, now in the church that was at Antioch, there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas, Simeon, who was called Niger, uh, 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 Lucius of, of, of Cyrene, Minen, who had been brought up with Herod, the Tetrach, and Saul. Hallelujah. Verse number two. The Bible says, and they ministered to the Lord and fasted. The Holy Spirit said, now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have called them. Verse number three. Then having fasted and prayed and laid hands on them, they sent them away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. May the Lord bless the reading of his word in the name of Jesus Christ. We may take our seats in the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, I, I, want, you, I want you to watch here. Um, and, 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 and maybe we're going to stay here tonight. Um, the Bible says, now in the church that was in Antioch, um, 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 the Bible says there were certain prophets and teachers. Barnabas Simeon, uh, who was called Niger, and he begins to name all of them. Hallelujah. Number one, and very important, Lord help me that I teach this tonight. I want you to understand that the people that scripture refers to, the Bible says they were in the church. Hallelujah. They were in there? Uh, come and talk to me. They were in there? They were, the, these people were found in the church. And, and I, 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 allow me just to pause here tonight. Uh, we're in pre-COVID. People think they can do without church. Pre-COVID. People think church has lost its value. Pre-COVID. No, no, no. I've, I've, I've actually uh, realized that uh, uh, I can still worship God in my house. I don't need to be in a church. Hallelujah. Uh, actually, actually, the, the Bible that you guys are reading, it must evolve and fit with the time. That's, that's, that's nonsense. No, no, not the Bible that was written by God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we, we still live according to this Bible. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now watch, the Bible says these people were in the church. I want to submit to somebody tonight that it is important that you must belong to a church. Hallelujah. Belong, don't be a church prostitute. Don't be a church ambassador. This Sunday you are here, this Sunday you are here, this, you've got no place of belonging. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because when God wants to use you, he also wants to check where is your place of belonging. He wants to check where are you rooted. God will not use you. God will never use a person who does not have roots. Amen, somebody. Hallelujah, somebody. Because your lack of roots tells us that you can fall for anything. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I keep on teaching from this pulpit that you will never be saved until you serve somebody. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Therefore, you must go and check. Go and check every man that God called in the Bible. That man was serving somewhere. Whether they were serving in business, but they were rooted somewhere. Even the disciples of Jesus, they were called rooted somewhere, doing something. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Therefore, you must understand that God will never call you and you, you just mushroom out of nowhere. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. The only person that God called and he was not doing anything was Adam. Amen? Because God created him. Hello? But watch, when God created him, he placed him in the garden and said, work the garden. He did not create him to sit and do nothing. He didn't have a place of belonging. That's why the Bible tells us that after him and his wife had eaten the fruit in the middle of the garden, God goes back to the garden. What does this tell us? God will always go to your place of origin to find you. Hallelujah. He won't go anywhere else. He knows where you are rooted. And if you've got no roots, which means God cannot find you anywhere. Hallelujah, somebody. And let me tell you something. This is not a campaign for you to become a member of this church. But I'm, I want to challenge you. Please have a place where you are rooted. Have a place where you are covered, where you submit to. Amen. Amen. 
As much as today you don't wake up and you work for ESCOM, tomorrow you work for Old Mutual, you work for KFC, you work for this. You've got a place where you're rooted. Why are you rooted? Because that's where you get your rewards. Uh, am I talking to somebody? Am I talking to somebody? That's where you get your rewards. Even when month end comes, you are not confused. You are very sure that where I'm rooted, whether I was in, whether I did not come to work, whether I was sick for two weeks, but I know I'm the sickness for two weeks does not change where I'm rooted. Uh, am I talking to somebody tonight? Hallelujah, somebody. They still pay me when I'm sick. But why do we become rooted at old mutual and we can't be rooted in God? Eh? Today we are with God, tomorrow we are with an Inyanga, tomorrow we are with Machonisa, tomorrow we are with this, because you are not rooted. And that's why you have opened a door and your spirit is under attacks of a lot of spiritual forces because you are not rooted. The devil has also realized that you are not rooted. Amen, hallelujah. Ask your neighbor, neighbor, how rooted are you? Ah, come and tell your neighbor, neighbor, how deep are your roots? We're going to come back here. Please take me to um, uh, Psalm chapter 1. Psalm chapter 1. We're going to come back here uh, quickly. I just want to uh, emphasize something on, on, on this point. Psalm chapter 1. Um, um, take me from verse number 1, 2, 3. Uh, Psalm chapter 1. Uh, let, let's read it. Listen. The Bible says, Blessed is the man who does not walk uh, in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful. Verse 2. The Bible says, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his, in, in his law he meditates day and night. Verse 3, the Bible says, he shall be like a tree. Done what? I talk to me, church. He shall be like a tree. What? Oh, you're not talking. He shall be like a tree that is what? The tree must be what? Who is, who is the tree here? The blessed man. The blessing does not make him to move around. The blessing does not get into his head and he starts being here. The Bible says, when you want to sustain the blessing, be planted. Listen, he says, he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of the waters, which bring forth fruits in its season. Now watch this. He says, whose leaf shall not wither. Ah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Therefore, when you are rooted and you are planted, even if it's a season of when your leaves must wither, but the Bible says because of where you are rooted, because of where you are planted, your leaves shall not wither, but you will continue bearing fruits. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Ask your neighbor one more time as a neighbor, where are you planted? Nowadays, we've got the born freeze. They are technologically advanced. No, I submit to no one. No, I'm not going to belong to any church. Actually, I belong to T.D. Jakes. Actually, I do this. Actually, I'm, I'm part of Ele e e e e Elevation Church. Have you ever been? Do you even know the doors? Because you don't submit to no one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen to the order of family that God created. Wives, submit to your husband. Order of family. It's a principle. Whether you want to vote it out or whatever, it's a, you will never vote out a principle. It says, wives submit, husbands love. Principle. End of story. Apostle Dr. Maxwell Masakona, he says, principles never grow old. Principles do. Principles don't grow old. Hallelujah. So even if you challenge it, you will never challenge it. You can challenge a law. You can't challenge a principle. Hallelujah. The, the, the issue of you reaping and sowing, it's a principle. You can't challenge it. That's why Muslims are richer than you because they give better than you. You are very stingy, but you are a best worshiper and a prayer warrior, but you are stingy. You will remain poor. Principle. End of story. We, ask, we say, bring offering, you bring 10 rand. Hello? And listen to me. It's not the size of the offering. It's the size of your heart. The motive in your heart when you give. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go back there, brother. Um, uh, the Bible says, now, now, now they were in the church. They were rooted in the church. Hallelujah. I'm making this submission one more time. Be rooted in the church. We love it. In, the, in this church, we've got dual membership. If you've got your church at home, you can still keep your membership at home and become, be rooted. Even if you transfer from here and go to Cape Town, find a church. People move, relocate, man. The first thing they want to find is the place to stay. There is the place to shop, but they don't look for a place to worship. The moment they look for a church, you must know things have gone wrong. <laughs> Hallelujah. The Bible says these guys were in the church. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 
Hallelujah. Now watch. Let's continue in scripture. Uh, um, 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 verse 2. Let's go to verse 2. The Bible says, number 2. The Bible says, they ministered to the Lord and fasted. Amen. Hallelujah. They did what? Uh, talk to me, church. They did what? Refuse yourself to be a bench warmer when you are in the church. No, I'm still talking about separated for the move. I'm going there. Don't worry. I'm building my story. I'm going, to, I'm, I'm going to be finished just now. Refuse yourself to be a bench warmer. Min find something to, that you can be part of to minister to the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And some of us don't want to include ourselves in what's, whatever is happening in the church. Now, what I'm saying tonight, I'm not saying become a part and parcel of a department in the church. Because you can still be a part of and parcel of ushering department. But you are not ministering to the Lord. You are ministering to a certain brother because you want his attention. You must minister to the Lord. Now, even when you come to church, hello, what do I mean by ministering to the Lord? When you come to church and the worship team is leading in worship, minister to the Lord in worship. When, 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 when the intercessors are leading us in prayer, minister to the Lord in prayer. When the word of the Lord is being preached, minister to the Lord. When we are giving, minister to the Lord. Refuse yourself to be a bench warmer. Say, God, I have come into the church. This is your church. I have come into your presence. I have not come here for anything else. I've come to minister to the Lord. You know why you are church hopping and leaving church every time? Because you came to church to minister to the pastor, not to minister to the Lord. You came to church and you are ministering to people. You are not ministering to the Lord. Eating you tell Zalone, in Kenison, Amahala, Uti, Um Salone will disappoint you. I'm telling you, people in the church will disappoint you. Please make a conscious decision when you join a church. Minister to the Lord. That's why even when you criticize the ZCC, I'm telling you, I, I, I hope next year they're opening. Next year when they say we are going to Moria, even after three years without going, because they have made a conscious decision that this is what we are ministering to. You will see them. Buses are flocking. You Christians, you speak in tongues of men and angels, but you are not rooted in your ministry. You know why you're not rooted? Because you are here for miracles. You are here for prophecies. I receive... I receive. What are you receiving when you're not ministering? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now watch. The Bible says they ministered to the Lord. Number two and very important. The Bible says they fasted. Another version will tell you that they fasted and prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, somebody. If a church needs to be successful, if a church needs to have successful people in it, it must be a prayerful church. Let me tell you something, child of God, that nothing is going to happen miraculously without prayer. Hallelujah. I wrote here, if you're taking notes, move with me, that whatsoever has been birthed and established through prayer will need prayer to sustain it. Can I say that again? Whatsoever has been birthed and established through prayer will need prayer to sustain it. Hallelujah. Understand that your move will not come while you are just seated and doing nothing for the Lord. Understand that discovering, discovering of that which you are called for comes to revelation when you are serving God. Now don't just say, yeah, take notes. I'm going to say it again. Understand that discovering of that which you are called for comes to revelation when you are serving God. It does not come automatically. You must be serving for you to find the revelation of that which you are called for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Paul and Barnabas were found in prayer. Hence, they were able to be separated. Now watch it. Watch it. The Bible says, as they were ministering to the Lord, as they were fasting and praying. Now, watch, number two. Number three, the Bible says, the Holy Spirit said. Are you hearing the Bible? Are you hearing the Bible? The Holy Spirit spoke. Now, can we, can we analyze the Bible together? What force, I mean, what initiated or instigated the speaking of the Holy Spirit? It was not being close to the pastor. No. 
what made the Holy Spirit to speak was that there were people in the church that were ministering to the Lord and that were fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible says the Holy Spirit said. What did the Holy Spirit say? Let's read together. Let's go. One, two. Oh, you're not reading. Let's read together as a mass. Let's go. One, two. Now separate to me. Sometimes I misquote the scripture. It does not say for me. It says separate to me. Hello? Hallelujah. This is the word of the Holy Spirit. Oh my God, my God, my God. Shake your neighbor and say, neighbor, never start a move. Tell your neighbor and say, neighbor, never make a move until it has got confirmation of the Holy Spirit. Until the Holy Spirit has confirmed it. The Bible says the whole as they were fasting and praying, the Holy Spirit was the one that spoke. Listen to me, child of God, that it is important that you, before you make your move, you need to be like Moses and say, God, if your presence is not going with me, if your spirit is not going with me, therefore do not let me take a step. The Bible says they were in the church, but they did not stop praying until the Holy Spirit spoke. They did not stop serving. They did not stop ministering until the Holy Spirit speak. I decree and declare upon your life that before the end of this year, that move that you want to make towards that business, that move that you want to make towards that tender before I know all the resources are ticking the boxes. Everybody agrees with you, but listen to me. Don't move according to people's opinions. Move according to confirmation and approval of the Holy Spirit. The Bible says the Holy Spirit spoke. I decree and declare that I hope God must open Open your spiritual ears that when you when he speaks you must hear him hallelujah 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 Paul and Barnabas they were found in prayer blessed be the name of the Lord the Holy Spirit spoke when the Holy Spirit spoke he says separate to me Paul and who and Barnabas because listen to me child of God why did God, why did the Holy Spirit pinpoint Paul and Barnabas? Because they were in prayer. I want to believe, child of God, that God already had in mind Paul and Barnabas. But the question is, what was delaying their calling is their absence in his presence. Watch the calling of Moses. When God calls Moses, Moses was in the wilderness. He was busy tendering the flock. God calls him. I mean, God, Moses goes up to Mount Horeb. When he is at Mount Horeb, the mountain of God, the Bible says he sees a burning bush. When he sees a burning bush, the Bible says he goes closer to the burning bush. He wants to see what is this thing. But it was not just a bush that was burning. It was the calling. It was the presence of God. That's why before God spoke up, he said, take off your sandals for the place that you are standing in it's holy ground. I have brought you in my presence. Now that I have found you, I can separate you. Now that I have found you, I can call you. Now that I have found you, I can use you. But if you are not available and found in the presence and you are available for everybody else, you are available for your sickness, you are available for your troubled family, you are, you are available for your work, you are available for this, but the need for the church to arise in this time to be available for God in his presence so that God can separate them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Write this thing down. It matters that you are rightly positioned for God to be able to separate you for your calling, vision, and purpose. It matters that you are rightly positioned. Someone say rightly positioned. Someone say, rightly positioned. Now watch this, church of God. What makes, uh, what's this guy who plays? What's this guy? Uh, Cristiano Ronaldo. It's not that he's a powerful soccer player. He's a good soccer player. Let me tell you something. If you want to see the fall of Cristiano Ronaldo, let him be skilled, but when the match is going on, to be wrongly positioned. Am I talking to somebody? Now, People can, your, your fellow soccer players are not able to pass you the ball if you are not in the right position. Hallelujah. 
You've got the power to make the score. You've got the power to score the goal. But listen to me. You can't score the goal if you are not rightly positioned. And this is the other problem with the church. Is that we are in the church. We worship. We give. We do everything else. But we are not positioned rightly for God to call us. We are not positioned rightly for God to be able to use us. We are not positioned. We are there. But we are not positioned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Talk to your neighbor, turn to the neighbor. You are here, but are you positioned? Are you positioned? You come to church every Sunday, but what is your position with God? Not the church. What is your position with God? Hallelujah. It is important. If you want God to fulfill the vision, if you want God to fulfill the purpose, if you want God to fulfill the calling, be rightly positioned. That's why when Samuel was born, I'm, I'm quoting things that I've taught the, on, on this pulpit. When Samuel was born, he was not supposed to stay with his mother, Hannah. He was supposed to stay at the temple because that is his position of calling. Amen? Amen? Because he can be with his mother and sucking his mother. Actually, who, whose milk did Samuel suck? Because he was taken to the temple from birth. Hallelujah, somebody. He was not even, I mean, I mean, Hannah brought him to, into the presence of the Lord. And that is where, if you read the Bible in, in 1 Samuel chapter 3, you will hear God calls Samuel and says, Samuel, Samuel. The voice was not in his mother's house. The voice was in the, at the right position. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. When God called Saul and converted him to Paul, he, he was not in Jerusalem. He was on his way to Damascus. Position, guys. Position is very important. Now, please, church, listen to me and listen to me very carefully. Please don't serve God from a wrong position. Don't, I, I don't care how busy you are. I don't care how skilled you are. I don't care how anointed you are. Please, make sure that the anointing does not reposition you. Don't make sure that the anointing does not get you big-headed and you reposition yourself. Because the moment you reposition yourself, you will make the wrong moves. Am I talking to somebody tonight? You'll make the wrong moves. And you know what I'm talking about. Go and check people that have repositioned themselves. Hallelujah. Ah, I, I keep on saying this. One of the things that COVID did on the, on the two years that we were under lockdown is to check how positioned are you for God. How positioned are you? Some of us, we have turned back. Some of us have become inyangas. We have twasad. We have done this. Some of us have become prostitutes. Why? Because we were not positioned correctly. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. Tell your neighbor this message. and say, neighbor, the devil is not scared about your, pra your prayer. Come and tell your neighbor. Say, neighbor, the devil is not scared about your prayer. The devil respects your position. That's what scripture says. He who is in Christ is a new creation. Position. For we live and we move and we have our being in him. Position. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So, so Christians, especially when you have become a Christian for too long and you know how church works, especially if you're like me and you grew up in church, ne? you become in church but you're not in Christ. You're not in Christ. And that's why you can compromise all the time. Because you're not in, in Christ. The, then the people that do not compromise, they become your enemies. Because you're not in Christ. Pumun, you can serve all you want, my dear. But please make sure that every time, God, am I in you? Or am, I, am I just in the church? Position. Somebody shout to say position. Somebody shout to say position. Hallelujah. I said this, but I'm going to read it because I wrote it. You can be skilled and have all the knowledge for the work. But it will mean nothing if you are not correctly positioned. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, let's finish tonight. Watch. The Bible says, separate to me Paul and Barnabas. Hallelujah. For the work which I have called them. Oh, hallelujah. They were separated for the work of the Lord, but never knew what lies ahead. Now, every time when God separates you for the work, he does not tell you what the work entails. That's number one. Number two, the, when God separates you for the work, 
He does not show you what you have to fight to fulfill the work. What God does is to separate you for the work. And I'm going to show you in scripture. The Bible says, he says, separate for me, Paul and Barnabas. But watch this. He says, I have got a work for them. Number two and very important, you must understand that God will never separate you without having an objective for your life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Tell your neighbor, the neighbor, God has got an objective for your life. They were separated for the work while they were ministering in the temple, not just doing nothing. They were separated for the work while they were in prayer and fasting. They were separated for the work without knowing what work entails for them. But they continued to fast and pray. Now, here is the challenge with many of us. Many a times when we become separated, we leave the things that caused the separation. It's there in scripture. Verse 3. Let's go to verse 3, brother. Watch. Let's read together. Let's go. Let's read together with a loud voice. Let's go. One, two. Uh-huh. They laid hands on them and they sent them away. They did not just send them away. Now watch. In verse 1, we hear that they were ministering to God and they were fasting and praying. Hallelujah. Now, separation came. And God said, separate them. The Holy Spirit spoke. Separate. Ah, oh, where now? For your name to be spoken by the Holy Spirit. And everybody was hearing it. You can be special. You can rise up. And says, I am the anointed one. I am the chosen one. But the Bible says, even after separation. And the work has been spoken. That I've got a work for these ones. But the Bible says, they fasted and prayed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Uh, let me pause here tonight. How is your prayer and fasting life? No, no, no. I see your Christian life. Let me, let, let's introspect your prayer life. How often do you fast in a, in a month? Uncle now. How is your fasting? And you think you're going to conquer? You think you're going to make it? And you don't have a personal time to say, this is my time to pray and fast. Hi, you've got the anointing. But let me tell you, the anointing will not be activated without prayer and fasting. Jesus says there's a kind that will only go away through prayer and fasting. No, nothing else. Hi, you can jump and dance, you can get prophecy. But let me tell you something, prayer and fasting is needed on your life. Prayer and fasting, it is a prerequisite. It is mandatory for every Christian to pray and fast. It is mandatory for every Christian to pray and fast. The churches of old never had programs for prayer and fasting because the Christians of old, prayer and fasting was part of their lives. You know why church has got programs now? Because Christians don't pray, mama. Christians don't pray. No, Christians are just, are just speaking things. But they're not begged by anything. How is your prayer life? Hey, I, I look at my leaders in the church. I'm like, are these people pray? Are these people pray? I was challenging my leader in intercession. I'm like, do, do you pray for me? When, when I wake up and I'm praying, you are sleeping. What's, what, what, what's your job? The church is not praying. And that is why, even when you call for prayers, Chandas, you call for prayers for the church, people don't come because it's not their lifestyle. Hallelujah. Are we getting something tonight? Are we getting something tonight? Hallelujah. The Bible says, separate these guys. But they were not told about the work. Amen, somebody. Amen, somebody. You must understand, child of God, allow God to separate you even when you do not know what lies ahead. The problem with us is that we want to know much. Before we make a move, we want to understand every detail until I get to Canaan. Uh, go ahead and read the story of the Egyptians. I mean, I mean, the Israelites working out of Egypt. God told Moses, release my people. Go and release my people. God never told them, you're going to hit a Red Sea. God never told them, you're going to hit the Hittites, the Amorites, the Jebusites, this, this nation and this nation. You're going to fight them. 
But God just said, I'm releasing you. And that is why, because they lack the details, when they hit the Red Sea, they always say to Moses, did you bring us out of here to come and die? Why? Because people want, want information all the time. God does not work by information. God works by faith. Because the provision of information is the lack of faith. Actually, let me put it this way. The provision and the available of too much information is the absence of faith. And many a times, the availability of too much information is the presence of fear. Aye. Right. Come to me, come to me, come to me. You must listen to me tonight. Listen to me. Let me tell you something. If you are a scholar, mama, and you read a lot about medical terms and this and this, you read it, and they say, uh, we have just diagnosed you with uh, lung cancer. You know what comes first? The things that you read. <laughs> Am I right? The, the things that you read, number two, what comes next? Uh, second, the things that you heard about what you have just been told. Aye, hallelujah. Am I talking? Now, come boy, come boy. Yes, come on, boy. Come, come. Give me my hand. Come on, guys. <laughs> How old are you? Huh? Seven. Now, this boy, there are his parents there. If we tell this boy, you've got prostate cancer, he doesn't have a problem. <laughs> Am I right? Am I talking sense to somebody? You say, you, you get. You, uh, you have just been diagnosed with prostate cancer. He still stands here. Tell that to his father. Because the father has got the knowledge of the world. The father stops going to work. The father does not deliver anymore. The father does. Everything about him changes. Not because it's supposed to change. Availability of information. That's why Jesus says, suffer the little children to come to me. That's why he wants us to be children. Because when you are not a child, you are full of fear. Go. You see, now, what is tormenting you right now, and you've got fear, is because you want every detail to be told to you. I'm ending here tonight. But let me tell you something. Separation does not come with details. Separation comes with faith. Separation comes with belief in the one who separated you. That's why Paul and Barnabas, when scripture says separate to me, they don't ask questions. You see, you have stopped praying and you're asking questions. God revealed to me, what does this mean to me? Rubbish, he won't reveal to you. You must just walk in it. <laughs> Hallelujah, somebody. And God is calling somebody tonight to walk in it. Not to pray on it. There are things that you don't need to pray on it. You must just walk in it. While you are walking, you discover the revelation. I was talking to my sister as, 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 as I was coming to church. We were talking about a certain, a certain incident. And, and she said to me, Bro, some of the things when they happen, we don't understand why they're happening. We only realize it after. Well, that's why it had to happen. And what, what is that called? Revelation. But we don't understand while we are still being pressed on every side. That there's a revelation behind this. Hallelujah. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't become a pastor. I, I don't qualify to stand on this pulpit. Unless God allowed me to go through things that you know yourselves. You all, everybody knows about it. Hello? And people think, no, this is a breakdown. No, it wasn't a breakdown. It was a preparation of the calling. God was dealing with my heart to be able to accept each one of you with your faults. I keep telling people, this is my testimony. If God did not take me through, I think I would be one of the big-headed people ever. Pastors used to come home, tell professor, there's a calling upon them. I will tell them, oh, you're speaking rubbish. I'm called to be a businessman. Because I love, I love money. I'm called to be a businessman, not to do the, that which you are telling me. But God says, I'm going to take you through so that I can prepare you for the revelation. Hallelujah. Therefore, stop asking God too many questions and allow him to separate you. God separate me. And many times, he will separate us in prayer. He will separate us in a situation. He will allow a situation to come to you, to separate you. Read the story of Job. Separation. God was separating Job for a double portion. Away from his friends for a double portion. Why? Because he was not asking questions. Because 
No separation will come with details. As we are sitting tonight, I want us to pray for ourselves. I don't know what you're going through in life. I don't know what is the happening around you. But pray to God and say, God, separate me for the moment. Use whatever you want to use. Whatever, whatever tool that you want to use. But Lord, I need to be separated for the moment. Separated. Whatever God separates you from, it's because it was never part of where he's taking you. I feel that to say that again tonight. Whatever God separates you from, it's because he knows, you don't know. He knows that it's not part. We're going to go through this next week if, if, if God allows us. Watch after the separation. The separation happened in Antioch. When they started doing the work of Wetu. Hey, it was tough, eh? It was tough. But you will see the need of the separation. Separation does not mean that things are going to be easy. Separation only means that you are covered for where you are going. That's what separation means. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It just means that you are covered for where God is taking you. I want us to pray for ourselves tonight. God, separate me. I know things are tough, but God, separate me. I can't even make sense of what's going on right now. I'm in confusion, but God, separate me. If you need me to I need to be separated. I need to be separated. Part of the understanding that you need, it will only happen when you are separated. I, need to, I don't need to understand. Lord, help me to be rooted. While, while I'm being separated, help me to minister. To minister to you. While I'm being separated, help me, mighty God, to stay under the cover while I'm being separated. Let's pray for ourselves tonight. Open up your mouth and begin to pray. Spirit of the living God, we come to thy throne of grace tonight. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for every man and woman under the sound of my voice. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hello, mighty God, as we continue ministering. As we continue serving, as we continue trusting in you, O oh God, that Almighty God, in the name of Jesus Christ, as you spoke, the Holy Spirit shall speak, the Holy Spirit shall confirm, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, about our separation, the Holy Spirit shall release a word, in the mighty name of Jesus, about the separation, I pray for men and women, that O oh God, even when we are separated, but we will stay in prayer, we will stay under the cover, we will stay and be rooted in the church, I pray in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Mighty God, as you said to, to, to Saul and Barnabas, I'm separating you for the work that I am calling you for. I am separating you to me because I've got a calling for you. You don't need to understand it. You don't need to see it. You don't need to touch it. But just believe in me. Just trust in me. I pray for everyone under the sound of my voice. I pray for strengthening of the faith in the mighty name of Jesus. For this calling that you're calling them for. For that vision. For that idea. For that move, oh God. In the mighty name of Jesus. I pray spirit of the living God. May it be so that no one of us shall withdraw. No one of us shall retract. But oh God we shall stand firm and believe and declare and be rooted on the one that who calls us. And we believe that he who began a good work in us. He is faithful to see it to completion. In Jesus mighty and precious name. I pray spirit of the living God. That oh God we will have faith and trust in you. Mighty God that oh God as you have called us you are not calling us in vain you are calling us for something and an objective and a goal that you need to fulfill in us you are calling us for a purpose that you need to fulfill in us in Jesus mighty and precious name I thank you in the name of the Lord amen and amen come on lift up your hands and give God a hand of praise tonight hallelujah come on we come on